हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून मैम यस यस गुड आफ्टरनून आपने वेटिंग रूम हटाया नहीं सर आप खुद एक्सेप्ट मैम एक्चुअली नहीं नहीं आई जस्ट स्टॉप मींस इनेबल्ड द वेटिंग रूम नाउ बिकॉज़ देयर वर लॉट ऑफ पीपल एंड फिर वो ट्रायल लेने पे मुझे प्रॉब्लम हो रहा था सो आई इनेबल्ड द वेटिंग रूम आई विल डिसेबल इट बिकॉज़ इट इज आपको ही प्रॉब्लम वो क्योंकि बार-बार आप ही को एक्सेप्ट करना पड़ेगा फिर ओके विद इट ठीक है नो नो आई विल जस्ट ट्रायल हो गया कर दिया आपने या अच्छा अच्छा मेरा वो गुड आफ्टरनून मैम प्रिंसिपल मैम गुड आफ्टरनून प्रिंसिपल मैम ओके मैम देयर वाज वन कंसर्न ओवर हियर कि लाइक देयर आर लॉट ऑफ पीपल हु आर जॉइनिंग इन हियर लाइक लॉट ऑफ आउटसाइडर पीपल सो आई बिलीव दैट वी माइट वी शुड नॉट रन शॉर्ट ऑफ द नंबर ऑफ पार्टिसिपेंट्स मैम मींस वी शुड नॉट एग्जॉस्ट द एंटायर 100 बिकॉज़ इट्स ऑलरेडी 26 एज ऑफ नाउ आई कैन सी मैम यू आर म्यूटेड मैम हाँ या मैम हेलो या मैम नाउ यू आर क्लियर मैम हाँ आई कैन सी सिक्स पीपल नो द इन द वेटिंग रूम देर आर ऑलरेडी आई गेस ट्वेंटी फोर मोर एंड दीज आर ओनली आर टीचर्स मैम एंड देन Uh, there were a lot of people so someone from nehru science center a couple of people had joined in ha uh, suhas naik ya 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 ha suhas naik ko karo national acha ek kaam karo tum jaise bahar ke jo jo guest aa rahe hai na unko lete ro because these are the people only we have sent to okay okay so what we will do is will not uh, uh, teachers ko ab... students log ko nahi lete hai ma'am but then yahan par se problem kya ho raha hai na like the, they are abhi students joining, ko mat lo yeah they are joining with random names ma'am and so i'll have to accept them one by one manually so oh, mean so ab ek kaam kar lo tum mm-hmm. kuch bhi hello vipin can you hear me ha ha tum yes, ek kaam kar lo ki tum uh, last ke 10 chhod ke rakho 10 chhodo bas baki you use your discretion i think apne okay. teachers ko lo office okay, staff bhi davinder indrajit hoenge unko le lo okay hai na yeah science teachers hone chahiye sab jan just see just see ha huh? yeah sure ma'am okay uh i mean uh, last last ke 10 rakhna ha 10 rakhna hai mere yeah ma'am i'm admitting bina ma'am she's there no yeah ha unko karo karo unko karo mujhe naam bolte jao na kon kon hai fir main batati hu yeah uh means uh, okay there's a uh, afrin ma'am dhananjay sir deepak dhanashri patel dheeraj dr rupesh gaikwad group ha i think dalo unko dal yeah yeah अच्छा जय रमन सर इज देर गुड आफ्टरनून सर so one one of the feather into the caps of the guru nanak college yes definitely good afternoon punjabi madam good afternoon dr jay raman good afternoon good afternoon thank you dr bhagwat thank you good afternoon everyone vipin sir am i audible yes, yes ma'am uh, we can hear you very clear ma'am thank you okay. good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon to all the teachers and principal 
very very good afternoon to all good afternoon ma'am sir thank you good afternoon sir and good afternoon all oh sir dr ramesh thank yes, you sir. thank you sir thank you for inviting me sir thank you for making me to attend this program thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, Dr. Jalaman Devesh. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you, sir? Very fine. Very fine. As usual. So much for inviting. Looking forward. I think Suhas is there, sir. Suhas, Suhas right? Yeah. I think I saw him. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, you saw him. Yes. Hi, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Is Professor Sharma has come? Yeah, no, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. He'll join later by two forty-five. Yeah. Okay. Even the YouTube live is working fine, right? Hello, uh, yes, sir. It's uh, working fine. I've shared the link in the group. You can just uh, check one All time. Right. I tried that. It's uh, looking good to me. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay, sir.
good afternoon pranesh dr sen gupta yeah good afternoon good afternoon how are you yeah fine thank you nice to see you yeah same here yeah. professor tiwari is joining today no 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 i got i'll tell i'll tell you i'll call you okay okay yeah. okay thank you he is under uh, super yeah, yeah okay okay yeah. oh oh, oh. Dr. Narendra Tendulkar, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, madam. Good afternoon. Good yeah, afternoon, I'll just, Dr. Tendulkar. I'll just switch on my video just just for a moment. Good afternoon to all. Suddenly got disconnected. Okay, after party. What do you say? Who? I am out to the party. I am wanted. our guests will be joining by another another 5 minutes they'll join us so we wanted Hello, to Mukinda. give this yeah we wanted to give this margin time you know for people to join hello yes hello pushpinder madam good afternoon ah uh, good afternoon sir how are you good afternoon very 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 fine bina madam good afternoon hello punjabi madam madam is the, not there on the line hello madam please madam is there but i think uh, oh. she's on mute she is on mute i think she's muted there can you hear hello yeah punjabi madam how are you i'm fine i'm seeing you after a very long time how are you good afternoon sir dr amit mr amarjit singh Sir has joined. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, sir. <clears throat> He is not able to hear. He is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. I think many names, you know, I may not, uh, you know, identify because these are all probably user names. So very, very good afternoon to all of you. I think there are many members from the NCSC. Warm welcome to all. Bhagwat sir, I can see you. Our students have all joined on YouTube. Good afternoon, Kondekar sir, Dr. Prakash. Namaskar. Yes, my our students Namaskar, are uh, joining on YouTube. The the number has been increasing. Good minutes.
विपिन यस मैम विपिन या स्टीफन इज जॉइनिंग अ सर करेक्ट या या ही 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 इज इन एंड प्रोफेसर एपी तिवारी सर इज आल्सो इन मैम ओ ही इज देयर या जस्ट नाउ ही ही या मैम वेलकम सर तिवारी सर Good afternoon, Stephen. Dr. Professor Stephen Webster. Very good afternoon from Mumbai. Professor Webster, can you? Uh... Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon from here. Yeah. Good morning from London. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Sharma sir has joined. Vipin. Uh, no, ma'am, not the eight. I'll just. सुंदर मैम गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रॉम भागवत सुंदर मैम Vipin, sir has logged in. Uh, please admit. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, I cannot see him in the you waiting have? room, ma'am. Uh, actually. M M M Manmohan Sharma. M M Sharma. Can you see, sir? Uh, no. There are only two people in the waiting room. One is some dot, and another one is admin, ma'am. I doubt that. Both admit both. Them. Okay, ma'am. Ad ad admit both. Ad admit yeah. both. Yeah, yeah, done, ma'am. Sir, yes, sir. Sir is there. Very good Enjoy afternoon, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, Thank sir. You. Good afternoon. Sir is on good. mute. Yes. Good now he's. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, Professor Sharma. Hello. How are you? How are you? Nice to see you. Talk to you on the phone, <laughs> but not there. <laughs> So, Krishna, you are busy as ever. She's busy as ever, <laughs> and she's uh, keeping us really well. Uh, you know what should I say? In our spirits, high. Yes, book book has come uh, out or not? So, for all that's happening in Bombay, oh, I know. Country, she her spirits are still very high, very positive. 
So it's commendable that she is conducting so many activities and then. Yes, yes. yes. And we are really uh, yeah. fortunate. She is doing a great job. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, my, my staff, my colleagues are also, sir, they are all up to something always. So, so they are all with me and it's uh, nice to have you here, sir. So shall we start the program? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Stephen, you're there. Professor Stephen, yeah. Yeah, Professor Stephen is there. Yes. We'll start. Hey, hey, good yeah. to see you. Thank yes. you. Uh, <laughs> good morning for you. Good morning, sir. May I begin, ma'am? I think we should move. Yes, please begin. Yes, Amri. So, a very good afternoon to our chairman, principal, vice principal, eminent dignitaries with us today, colleagues, and my dear students. I, Amreen Mogar, take pride in welcoming you all to the launch of a unique and a niche course, Science Communication, by our college, Guru Nanak College of Arts, Science, and Commerce. As we know, most innovations in humanity would have been incomplete without a scientific temper and its application and understanding has been possible only through effective communication. So on that note, I would request our chairman, Sardar Amarjit Singh Saini, sir, to welcome all the dignitaries. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All the dignitaries, guests and participants, on behalf of Purunana College of Arts, Science and Commerce, I welcome Dr. Stephen Webster, Director, Department, Science Communication, Imperial College, UK, Padma Vibhushan, Professor M. M. Sharma, and the guest and staff of GN Khalsa College, GN Guru Nanak College, on the occasion of inaugural function or launch of certificate course in science communication in association with National Center for Science Communication. Science communication, the word when I heard first time, I thought, what is so special in science communication? I must be very, it must be like other communication when we express ourselves day in and day out, like talking, sending letters, emails, etc. But then I realized there must be some difference in ordinary communication and science communication. We need special skill and ideas to communicate with general public for giving scientific information and need to communicate differently when we communicate with experts in the subject. There are two very good examples we have in our lifetime. During 60s, we used to import wheat from USA as our production was very less and we could not feed our own population then our scientist community did a lot of research and communicated with our good planners, common planners and other experts about the results and benefits and then with farmers. They use different skills as the farmer's wavelength is different than the experts. They need detailed information in simple language, how to use fertilizer and other processes, etc and see the results, we became self-sufficient in food production. Now also, we use similar methods whenever new development in this field is come. Second example, the latest pandemic. We failed to communicate properly with experts and also with the general public. That is the reason we find that different medicine protocol is used in different hospitals and also people have no idea about the disease. They are treating themselves with different unwanted medicines. I believe this type of course are the need of the hours. And I really thankful to our college principal, Dr. Prashpinder Korpatia and her team who visualized this and worked hard to get the course in our college. Thanks Prashpinder ji again and also thank to all for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for such enlightening words. Now I would request uh, our very dear principal to give the welcome address. So I call upon our principal, Dr. Pushpinder Ji Bhatia. Thank you, Amreen. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. And, and uh, 
a special welcome to our guests, the very esteemed Professor M. M. Sharma, who is the chief guest of today's inaugural function, which is on in the online mode, of course. Professor Stephen Webster, very warm welcome to you for joining us from the UK on a Saturday morning. Professor A. P. Jairaman, the chairman of the National Center for Science Communicators. Our chairman, Sadar Amarjit Singh Saini, Dr. Mrs. Beena Punjabi, the academic advisor of the Vilgranath Vidyat Society, and of course, a mentor to so many of us at the Guru Nanak College. My dear friends and fellow principals who have joined this platform, my dear staff colleagues. Well, in the June of uh, 9, 2020, when the COVID pandemic had pushed us into our first lockdown, uh, the UGC put out a call for skill-based career-oriented programs with the objective of imparting employability skills to students in undergraduate colleges in various domains. At that time, the pandemic was at its first peak and it had led to a number of social media conversations about the unknowns of this novel and deadly virus. In fact, this pandemic is also known as the pan first, it is in fact the first pandemic of the age of social media. More often than not, the information or may I say misinformation is a bigger threat than the virus itself. At such times, the reliability of information that reaches out to the layman is under a big question mark. At such times, a synergy of media, public health systems, and policy makers is much needed. Now, when the UGC put out this call, we saw this as a huge opportunity in the area of science communication where we could propose a program to the UGC and train our students in this special skill, which of course offers a lucrative career prospect to our students. Uh, when I discussed this with Professor Jairaman from the National Center of Science Communicators, his team uh, relentlessly worked with our team at GNC. Of course, everything was done in the virtual mode and we proposed a curriculum to the UGC. Now this curriculum was inspired by the curriculum that Professor Webster's uh, department in the UK uh, has been running so successfully since uh, so many years. The our proposal was finally accepted. And in uh, December 2020, we got a sanction from the UGC for this program. Now, in the months that followed, we conducted a number of orientation programs to reach out to the students, to tell them about this exclusive program. And to our, uh, uh, to our joy, we have, and to our utter delight, we have a number of students who have expressed their desire to pursue this course. In fact, uh, I may say that we are also ready to run the program in two batches now, if the UGC permits us. Well, we are all geared up to start this course, which is a one of its kind in an affiliated college in India. And uh, even as we worked through all these uncertainties around us, may I say we were certain about one thing, which was that this program had to be inaugurated by Professor M. M. Sharma. Sir, I, I am deeply uh, grateful to you for accepting uh, our uh, invitation to come online and to inaugurate this program. Professor Stephen Webster, your presence has uh, enriched this whole event. And uh, we have, of course, a very long way to go. We look up to you for guidance in the implementation of this course. And your presence means a lot not to us for having joined us on uh, on this online platform. We hope to listen to your views and we, sir, uh, Professor Anand Sharma, sir, we hope to be guided by you. I extend a very, very warm welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you, Amri. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I would now like to call upon uh, Dr. Karthik to introduce uh, Dr. A.P. Jairaman, sir. Thank you so much, Amri. Am I audible, Amri? Yes. It's, it's indeed my pleasure to introduce our skill partner and our advisor for this course, Dr. A.P. Jairaman. 
So Dr. Jairaman holds a PhD degree in science, a PG DMM in management, and a diploma in engineering. He graduated from the elite scientific officers training school of the atomic energy establishment. And post that, sir has held various positions in esteemed institutions. He was deputed as science attache in 1970 to Expo 70, Osaka, Japan. He served as a professor in environmental engineering at Singapore and Dean Institute of Management Studies, Palakkad, Kerala. Presently, he serves the chairman of National Center for Science Communicators, and he's also the founder president of STEAM Academy. Sir has delivered various lectures and conducted workshops on scientific management and science education topics in various countries on numerous occasions. Sir has also won many accolades for his work, the highlight being the International Copernicus Award from Poland. Now, Sir has authored 20 science books, over 3,000 scientific articles, and delivered over 35,000 hours of discourse in science and technology. Sir, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to have you amongst us today. I once again welcome you on behalf of the Guru Nanak family and all of us, and kindly request you to address the gathering. Thank you, Dr. Karthi Krishnan. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Respected Chairman Sri Amarjit Singh Ji, Distinguished Professor Yamam Sharma, Fellow of the Royal Society, Respected Director, Professor Stephen Webster of the Imperial College, London, and Respected Principal, Dr. Pushpinder Bhatia, and invited distinguished guests and directors of various institutes and extremely academically profound audience who have spared their time for this. It's pure pleasure and sheer delight for me to be present on this uh, historic afternoon. I call this a historic afternoon for the simple reason that we are at the cross section of history. We are in the pandemic world. And it, for, as a survival tool in this pandemic world, the supply chain of science communication is the only survival tool we can think of in the knowledge management, in the production, distribution, exchange, and consumption of information, the seamless flow, a seamless supply chain of science communication is our essential tool for survival. There was a time when supply chain, when this science communication was at the point of desirability. From desirability, it went into essentiality. From essentiality, it came into vitality. And currently, it is a single critical variable for the survival of this species. Such an essence and such an outline is the importance of science communication today. Now, all of us overnight have become metamorphosed into science communicators, teachers, parents, doctors, health workers, everybody, scientists, journalists, everybody has become science communicators. It was a metamorphosis which we have never seen. On the one side, we see the information explosion. For example, if you look at the number of science publications, science research publications, which has appeared in the last one year during the COVID time, during the pandemic, it is 90,000 in number. In one year, there were 90,000 publications. It took 20 years for nanotechnology from 1990 today to produce 20 years required to produce the same number of results. There has been a rapid output. There was an explanation. Uh, there was an explosion of information. But the point is, we when we started science communication in the 1960s, 1970s, we were catching low-hanging fruits. We, if you had Kirkotmar Encyclopedia of Technology, Encyclopedia of Britannica and Fowler's Modern English Language as the three books, most of us could be flourishing science communicators. Today, we cannot have that type of science communication. It is absolutely impossible. Now, since everybody has become a science communicator, science communication itself has become very different. For example, if you are a teacher or if you are a parent, or if you are a grandparent like me, and if the generation, younger generation comes and asks me, what is the importance of this? Why should I wear a mask? Why should I wear double mask? Why should I wash my hands with soap? Then why should I keep social distancing? We should have answers for this. We should have intelligent answers for this because everybody, all of us have become science communicators. So as a grandparent, I should know that if I wash my hands with soap, that soap is the sodium or potassium salt of a stearic acid and that it undergoes hydrolysis in water, it becomes sodium hydroxide and there's an alkaline solution. As Peter Madover said, 
this virus is bad news in a protein cover. So that protein will be denatured by the application of sodium hydroxide. I must be able to give this much of information to my grandson as an enlightened fact. Moreover, if you ask me, why, why should I wear a mask? Why should I wear a double mask? Then I should know the viral load from the aerosols when I whisper, when I speak, when I shout and when I yell and when I cough and when I sneeze, the rates are very, very different. The number of particles being generated are different. I should be able to explain that. Beyond that, I need not only scientific literacy, I also need a scientific numeracy. I should be able to speak in terms of numbers. So for example, when I speak about social distancing, I should be able to explain the reproduction uh, factor, R factor for this, and I should give a reasonable explanation for this. So this has been the problem which we have been faced. So science communication is rapidly undergoing a change, and it has become a historical necessity. The pandemic world is also characterized by four parameters. We have the four parameters which we normally condense into an acronym called uh, VUCA. That is, we have this world is character. This pandemic world is characterized by volatility. The volatility of information is so high, it is higher than the volatility of dimethyl ether. You can imagine that. That is the volatility factor. And the uncertainty factor. The uncertainty factor of information today is much higher than Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. At least in Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, we know that the product of two uncertainties is a constant. Here we know that uncertainty is far beyond that. So that is the volatility and the uncertainty factor. Now you look at the complexity factor, the C factor. The C factor is much more complex, more complex than the entropy equation of Hawking. That would be the complexity you can bring to that. If, if you go to Hawking's equation and stand on uh, there, you will find uh, Westminster's Abbey, you will find the complexity of the equation. Yes, the situation today is more complex than that. And then we have the last one, ambiguity. The ambiguity which we are facing today when we are processing the information is uh, much higher than the ambiguity which Michael Sandel described in his uh, trolley affair, in his uh, trolley problem, or even that of the wave particle duality which we are seeing of this. So this is the volatility, the uncertainty, the complexity, and the ambiguity which is confronting the science communicators. So we have to be scientific communicators in, a, in an extremely strategically planned tactically designed and operationalized course. That is what we have been able to do it. And in this is the, uh, our chairman said that this is the need of the hour. This is the historical necessity for us. This is the essential tool, the single critical variable for our success. Keeping this in mind, we have designed the course and I am sure this will be a professional Philip and an entry into the world of science communication and its importance and significance will be multiplying enormously what we can imagine. With this background, we designed the course and we are very, very happy that we have large number. We have a galaxy of intellectuals. We have the bright and uh, the brilliant and bright minds who have assembled here for this inaugural function. I am grateful to each one of you for the sheer virtual presence of yours. I am grateful to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much for those words. Now I would request uh, Dr. Mithali, ma'am, to please introduce Dr. Stephen Webster. Uh, a very good afternoon to all. It is my privilege to introduce our second speaker, Dr. Stephen Webster. Professor Stephen has been the director of the Science Communication Unit at Imperial College UK since 2008. His degrees are in zoology and in the philosophy of science. His research is on Charles Darwin and on the ethics of science. His books include Thinking About Biology in 2003 and Darwin in 2014. He has co-edited collection The Sciences of The Silences of Sciences in 2017. Professor Stephen is keenly interested in the links between arts and science, and in the way science communication can enrich science research culture. Professor Stephen's recent research work on reticence, intimacy, innocence is being popularized as the Stephen's model in science communication in India. This research was published in the research journal Nature. We are indeed honored to have you amongst us. 
may i request you sir to address all the participants thank you very much for your kind introduction and um it's great to see professor narayam again um we had such a wonderful conversation only a few months ago um so i won't say many words i'll speak for 10 minutes i'm so delighted to be here um perhaps i should start with a personal touch um all collaborations, all good links between universities must have an element of friendship, of personal knowledge. And I'm, I'm, I'm fond of India because I spent uh, many months when I was um, in my early 20s working down at Velour CMC um, as a technician in Tamil Nadu. And um, got to know India very well and travelled around a lot. The place I landed was, of course, then Bombay, and I remember it very clearly. So I'm very um happy to be with you now and celebrating this great course and very excited for the future of, of your students. I mean, when I first got to know India, um, I quickly became aware of its um, important scientific background, um, reading about Nehru, reading about the independence movement, reading about democracy in India. I saw that this truly um, is a civilization with, a, with, a, with an extraordinary past but also with a, you know, a great um, um, interest in, in modernity and using the fruits of science. And I, I kind of want to talk now about how I feel science communication can produce the best sort of, of human progress. And I'm very pleased about your course. Um, I'm very happy about the likely future of your students, because as several speakers have said already, um, we need good science communication. Um, an important um, head of United Kingdom Research said recently, the science isn't done until it's communicated. And um, we've just heard Professor Narayam say these very important things, which I've written down immediately. Um, everybody has become a science communicator. Everybody has become a science communicator. And it's true, I think, you know, I've been working on my course for about 20 years. It's about 30 years old. Um, science communication in London, um, it had a big boost or, you know, a, a large amount of excitement when we all began to worry about climate change. How should we communicate climate change, something so abstract, so apparently distant and yet so crucial? How do we make it seem urgent? So climate change is a, is a very large issue for science communicators. But COVID, the pandemic, has, as Professor Narayam says, made all of us science communicators. But he also mentioned, didn't he, in this talk about um, volatility, about ambiguity, about complexity. And this is an interesting aspect for your students and for all of us working in science communication. How do we communicate science um, when there's so much volatility about, when the results are being presented in so many different ways, when um, communities have so many different views? And this, I think, is... Um, you know, one of the things science communicators are really having to struggle with now. Let me tell you a little bit about my course. And let me also, you know, extend immediately the hand of friendship from Imperial College. Um, we hope to work with you. I hope to meet your students. Um, and I hope we can influence each other because, you know, we've got a lot to learn from how you set about your science communication work in Mumbai. And I very much want to hear more. I want to say just a couple of things about science communication, which I hope will be I want to say a couple of things. Um, those of you who are about to study science communication, um, you'll have your own word for science communication in your various languages. Of course, the English word communication comes from the Latin. It comes from the word communicare, which means to share. It means to share. And... There is this very important aspect of science communication, which is the balance so difficult to get right. Is this our job to take established scientific knowledge and then spread it out? Um, or is it our job also to share, to listen, to find out what's going on in different communities, what's going on in different schools, what's going on in different parts of the country? And you'll, I'm sure, have heard that um, for some time um, in the United Kingdom, um, we've debated amongst ourselves, is science communication about transmission, the sending of results, the, 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 the kind of distribution of scientific knowledge in as accurate and important a way as possible, 
or is it in or is or is science in some sense is science communication in some sense a kind of relationship if you like a relationship where there's to and fro where there's learning and there's telling where there's showing and there's listening and this is a very difficult thing to get right because as we have seen with the pandemic um, the importance of reliable information of knowing the facts of understanding what is the necessity. No one can possibly um, dispute that. But on the other hand, we know also that um, misinformation um, comes not only from parents or grandparents or different sorts of people. Misinformation comes also from politicians. Misinformation comes from all over the place. There's been a lot of misinformation from the British government. Only yesterday, um, our prime minister was saying that our excellent vaccine rollout, the fact that 60% of our population have already received their first dose of the AstraZeneca virus, of the, the AstraZeneca vaccine. Boris Johnson said, that's because we left the European Union. That's just simply not true. It's simply not true. So there's an interesting role for science communicators in working out um, where the misinformation is coming from and in making sure that we, if you like, broker um, the best sort of versions. So that's one thing I think for us all to think about, um, not just our ability to express scientific knowledge precisely. Um, partly that's difficult because even, especially for pandemic, we've had so many different sorts of scientific news. I mean, anybody um, would be justified in sometimes feeling confused over whether, for example, the AstraZeneca is safe or not. Um, You'll have heard that in our situation in the United Kingdom, um, the AstraZeneca vaccine, which was being rolled out for everybody, um, eventually it was decided actually it shouldn't be given to people under the age of 30. And of course, this can be confusing and it's confusing because there's different sorts of information moving around. Different scientists have different views, well-held views, in some sense, truthful views, but simply different interpretations of the data. So this makes the life of the science communicator particularly fascinating because they've got to try and understand that as Professor Narayam said, we're dealing with ambiguity, we're dealing with volatility, not just in society, but also in science. And I think uh, Professor Narayam's point, everybody is a science communicator and um, today there's a historic necessity for science communication. I think he's hit the nail on the head, but actually, um, we're all thinking hard about the right thing to do. We're all thinking hard about the vaccine. We're all thinking about the hard, about the next step. And there's a sense in which there, are, there isn't always a single right answer. Now, I want to end by saying to find the right answer, um, we found on my course at Imperial College, um, but it's not enough simply to know the science. It's not enough simply to know the science. You also have to understand the people around you. I don't mean just mean scientists either, although that is important. You need to understand as best you can the society around you. You need to understand the society around you. Now in your case, well, in, in the case of Great Britain, that's a complex task to understand society. In the case of India, this great, enormous country to understand society seems nigh impossible. And that's where you need friends. That's where as science communicators, you need friends. Make friends with social scientists, make friends with humanities scholars, make friends with artists, make friends with musicians. These people will help you understand society better. They'll help you do your work better. They'll make your work more interesting as well. I remember in India, many occasions going into villages in Tamil Nadu, and hearing musicians and dance troops and theatrical groups um, talk about family planning, talk about hygiene. Um, there are so many relationships a science communicator needs to be involved in, and that really will help you get the communicare right, the sharing. In a way, um, I want to end with um, a great statement from Professor Peter Peart. Professor Peart is now director of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, who was director of United Nations AIDS, spent many years in Southern Africa working on how to get um, retrovirals being used by um, different sectors of a population. And he said, nothing for the people without the people, nothing for the people without the people. 
And what he meant was that there is no question that science is the most reliable, useful, and proven um, type of knowledge we have. Um, it is for the people. Um, that's the job of a science communicator. But we have to have the people with us. We have to have the people with us. And so part of the job of a science communicator is to get expert at science, brilliant at communicating it, formidably skilled um, in all the different aspects which your wonderful college, Guru Nanak College, and your teachers will give you. But also you must look outwards. You must look outwards. You must look outwards to India and see what the concerns are, see what people are already doing, see what's happening in the communities and the villages and the countryside. Um, be skeptical, be skeptical of politicians, be skeptical also of scientists because you are critical friends. You are critical friends. The best kind of friend is the critical friend. And the more we can do our work intellectually, critically, but helpfully, the more we'll be trusted, the more we'll be seen as independent, and the more you will be listened to and the better your work will be. So once again, just to end, I extend a, friend, I extend a warm hand of friendship from Imperial College. I'm really delighted about this course. Um, it's great to be back in touch with you, um, Professor Narayam, and great to be back in touch with India. And I look forward to hearing a lot more about how you progress. And I certainly look forward to meeting your students and hear about um, the difference they're going to be making. So thank you very much. And thank you very much for this invitation. Thank you so much, uh, thank Dr. You. Stephen Webster. And uh, we look forward to your guidance. And I'm sure our students would love to meet and interact with you. And uh, with that, we move forward. And I would like to request our principal ma'am again uh, to come and invite uh, Professor M.M. Sharma for the talk that we are also waiting eagerly for. Thank you, Amri. Uh, I think one of the most difficult tasks is to introduce somebody who everybody knows and someone whose achievements are a benchmark to so many of us in academics. Uh, it is my privilege to welcome, to introduce, and of course, to invite uh, Professor M.M. Sharma to today's uh, platform. Sir is a role model for, our, for all, and personally to me, for his great vision that shaped the fortunes of so many of his illustrious students and of the Institute of Chemical Technology that he was a student of and later went to head. After completing his MSc Tech from the then UDCT and PhD from Cambridge University, he shattered many a glass ceiling in his career. He was appointed as a professor of chemical engineering at the age of 27, and he was the first Indian engineer to be elected as a fellow of Royal Society UK. He was later awarded the Leverhulme Award Medal of the Royal Society. Now to tell you a little about this award, this medal has been awarded 21 times, out of which 19 awardees have been UK citizens. And this award was only given out twice to non-UK uh, experts and engineers, and one of who is Professor Sharma. Ashanti Swarup Bhatnagar awardee, Sir was later awarded the Padma Bhushan in 1987, the Padma Vibhushan in 2001, and several universities, including IITs, have awarded him honorary doctorates. His life is an inspiring story that we all can follow. And as I said, it's a benchmark to so many of us. I feel exclusively privileged, sir, to have received your pearls of wisdom whenever I have met you. We at GNC are extremely grateful to you for having accepted to be here and for your presence. And we are keenly, keenly looking forward to listen to you. I again welcome you, sir, and I invite you to deliver the inaugural address. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your warm appreciation. I have always enjoyed your visits and visits to your college. So, Chairman Sainiji, under your leadership 
and Pushpinder's, um, you know, very smart moves with her colleagues, you have been able to fetch from UGC the first of its kind uh, science communication certificate course. My congratulations to you and your team. Professor Webster, Professor Jai Raman, other distinguished uh, personalities, doc Dr. Bina Punjabi. I'm very happy that your college has got recognition for introducing this science communication course. And today's situation really demands how science should be communicated. But before I do that, I want to take you back to 1920s, early 30s, when Sir C. V. Raman came out with Raman Effect. And I would like you to see how, in very simple words, he had explained Raman Effect. And how he had also explained in very simple words the phenomenon of blue sky. I think they were uh, legendary methods of communicating, uh, communicating uh, science. Similarly, many other Nobel Prize winners have explained in the Nobel lecture their outstanding research, blue sky research, which went places, many of them saw uh, industrialization on a grand scale and how they, in very simple words, they explain. So I would like in your curriculum from time to time to quote some of the Nobel Prize lectures of the clarity with which the Nobel Prize winners had explained their outstanding piece of work, which caught them this unusual uh, recognition. Right now, as everybody else has pointed out, this pandemic propels me to tell you something about how high science, blue sky research has been responsible for whatever successes we are realizing uh, in dealing with this epidemic. It used to take about 10 years to come out with a vaccine. Last year in February, many vaccine experts in the world and vaccine manufacturers in the world had said that this for this COVID, there is hardly any chance of coming out with a vaccine in less than four years. These were also through interviews with famous uh, magazines, uh, famous uh, newspapers like um, New, York, uh, New York Times and so forth. How high science has enabled vaccines to come out within a year. I think in any science communication, this should find an important place that what were these advances in basic sciences which enabled vaccine to be developed. Vaccine is really based on very high science. How genetic modifications have helped, how it has been possible to come out with vaccines after vaccines in a period less than 15 months. I consider this as one of the greatest achievements um, in, in science. It is also interesting to find how medicines which were meant for some other purposes like for HIV, remdesivir and all, how these are being linked to treatment of people who have been attacked by COVID. Now, these also need some explanations as to how science has helped in finding out medicines which were meant for other purposes that they are being used for totally uh, a new purpose. Media has played a very big role in India because just about every slum even has a TV set either individual or a community TV center. TV has played a very, very vital role. And I'll give you just one or two examples that how everybody knows today that the parentage can be fixed through DNA. 
they may not know the full expansion of dna they may also not know how this is done science communicator should be able to explain this phenomenon which just about anybody in the society now knows and in fact there are many colloquial words in hindi they say oh baap kon hai dna nikalo now these kind of communications similarly one which has made a fantastic impact on the whole world was attempts towards family planning and the invention discovery of the pill this requires very elaborate science communication i'm purposely picking up some topics which general public would appreciate because it concerns their daily life we all know that in earlier days weather forecasting used to have many jokes the famous cartoonist of india lakshman used to always have satire at the weather prediction and if they say it going to rain very heavily his cartoons will say don't go out with an umbrella because it may not rain those days are gone today there is a very very outstanding um, weather um, uh, forecasting method in europe and america of course it was very highly advanced many years ago but today in india so why i am mentioning this about weather forecasting which affects everybody general public farmers saving lives because if a cyclone is coming if typhoon is coming or there is a likelihood uh, of uh, earthquake in earthquake uh, prone areas now this has become a very critical issue but what i want to impress upon you is that whole thing was based on the science of astronomy please don't confuse this with astrology <laughs> india had a highly developed uh, culture in astronomy and you can go back to the famous astronomers so much so that some of the uh, uh, events have been named after uh, indian astronomers uh, it is astronomy which uh, helped the purpose of this is also to let tell you that how blue sky research has to be supported and supported vigorously because initially you may not know how this will be applied in everyday life and very vigorously and very effectively i like to take one or two examples to prove my point it was curiosity driven work which led to nuclear magnetic resonance nmr something like six or seven nobel prizes have gone in this area who knew in the beginning that this will be on the tongue of very common person because they all know mri can be taken now how does it work how this high science has become so very useful that everybody in the street knows this these are brilliant topics for people to be excited about uh, about science and and science communication plays a big it's one thing to do high class science and another thing to communicate that effectively just like teacher there are two types of teacher one type of teacher who make a simple subject very complicated so nobody understands oh, another yeah. type of teacher who is much wanted yeah. will explain complicated subject in such simple language that anybody can understand that is the quality of a teacher same thing i would say in science communication we need those science communicators who will make very complicated subject so simple that anybody can understand anybody can understand means anybody can um, can understand now apart from the media there is this whole you know we used to have calcutta um, um, center which used to show demonstration experiments now they have a great appeal to science communication through live experiments even royal society used to have these live experiments um, uh, where noted people like michael faraday 
have participated. Um, and there was a marvelous anecdote when he demonstrated electricity to the um, um, Chancellor of Exchequer. The Chancellor of Exchequer uh, said, Michael, what good it is? He said, sir, before long, you will tax it. <laughs> because the ch Chancellor of Exchequer uh, didn't realize that electricity will be so important that he will be able to collect massive sums of money through taxation. I must say the reply of Michael Faraday was very, very witty and very, very, very appropriate. So coming back to this whole culture of, and make sure that you have people who will communicate science in India in the regional languages. The talent of India is in rural area. And we often get completely uh, <laughs> taken away with the cities. Marathi Vijnan Parishad has gone to several villages and communicated the rigors of science and the benefits of science to the common public. And the kind of excitement among students of 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th standard, I hear from the president, A.B. Joshi, absolutely outstanding. And they then become source of being outstanding scientists in future. So communicating science in the rural areas through media as well as physical presence. You know, giving lessons online has one benefit. In absence of not being able to give physical talks. Because in physical talks, you look into the eyes of the participants. And then you can see whether there is excitement or there is no excitement. So please keep in mind that all these communications should not be just online. You must physically go to places. Persons who are articulate teachers, they become effective communicators and such persons should lead such activity and not persons who would give very confusing signals because all of us would remember some of our teachers were um, mumbling and um, only reading out from the notes, which doesn't inspire its students. You know, Students get inspired. You'll find in the life sketches of uh, most eminent scientists, how they got inspired. Uh, how they got inspired by the school teacher or college teacher or university teacher. Coming back to emphasizing in science communication, the role of blue sky research, because everybody keeps on saying applied research, applied. how does applied research come? Applied research can come only when you have done fundamental research. So blue sky research, which our politicians, I hate to say, don't seem to understand because no innovation can take place without invention and no invention can take place um, without blue sky research. And that a very serious uh, shortcoming in Indian culture of not owning failure ship. You never have inventions without encountering failures. It is in science you will find the life sketch of most brilliant scientists that how many uh, uh, disappointments they had, what they had aimed at, what they... And therefore, I would also like science communicator once in a while to show how serendipity has played a role in coming out with some extraordinary events uh, which have shaped um, uh, uh, our industrial um, world, like how polyethylene came into the... It was a serendipitous... Um, uh, um, um, Invention, which led to the largest volume polymer production uh, in, 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 in the world. Like that, there are many, many examples of serendipity. But emphasize simultaneously that serendipity has never struck uninitiated persons. If Fleming could check on penicillin, because he was a very gifted scientist, he saw something and thought there is something unusual. So follow it up. So science communication needs many more, uh, you know, small size um, uh, uh, publications in regional languages. I'm emphasizing regional languages again and again because most of us who talk in English, we are not able to go to the real teeming masses, which is an absolute um, uh, necessity. I can go on and on to tell you how science communication, it's like 
why don't we take a normal subject as a teacher can make that subject very exciting i take the example of thermodynamics if it is communicated well people realize how important thermodynamics is in life but if the teacher is at odds and teaches that subject people develop disdain for that subject for rest of their life and they then lose interest till someone else now in today's context you are hearing many things so i want to pick up one or two items uh, in the today's context because that requires good science communication you are all hearing word psa this is one of the great contributions of chemical engineers in in the world it stands for pressure swing adsorption based on the science of adsorption and based on philosopher's stone uh, deriving uh, inspiration from nature zeolites zeolites are referred to as philosopher's stone and zeolite spores can be manipulated anywhere from 3 angstrom to 12 angstrom now even even bigger and that the engineering practice of simulation was absolutely necessary to be able to design pressure swing today everybody is talking about i am importing so many pscs i am putting none of them seem to know i would like in your course take up this mundane example which is on lips of everybody today to show what is the science behind it what is the science of adsorption how um, uh, zeolites work and how one is able to get pure nitrogen or highly enriched oxygen of 95% plus through pressure swing um, uh, adsorption uh, similarly there are other examples very nice examples i want to give you that and you know i always say popularly how to impress your grandmother that i can convert sea water into potable water at room temperature without boiling and condensing she will always say you know you're talking nonsense then you in 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 a in a front you can show this very simple ro unit now again ro is in the words everybody in the street knows ro they say ro ka pani hai but they don't know what ro stands for and though nobody then explains the science of osmosis and reverse osmosis which is allowed what a major difference it has made to the quality of life through reverse osmosis because you can get clean drinking water from brackish water from sea water and such large number of units exist throughout the throughout the world uh kushvinder i i can keep on giving many examples i had promised that i for a longer time and no no sir uh, sir we uh, there are many many examples one can give in the science communication courses to um, uh, excite people um, i can also talk about leds everybody knows leds everybody also knows i think the most outstanding example to quote in science communication and how science communication is greatly helped by mobile phone how mobile phones work why led was so important led work was done out of pure curiosity and look at what major impact led has made in life so you should explain liquid crystals how led works because everybody see you know everybody has a mobile phone today you know it is fashionable those who want to brag say that i don't have a mobile phone unlike in the early stages people used to brag i have a mobile phone now you can brag exactly opposite <laughs> i don't have a mobile phone so once again let me congratulate pushpinder you and your your team you have done a great job in convincing ugc i know having been member of the commission before and my dealing with the ugc for many many years it's not easy to convince ugc to get a course sanction that too for the first time in an affiliated college so my very warm congratulations also congratulations to your management um, to your your chairman i you have heard me in your college many times to say that college is doing a great job in looking after the community of lower middle class in uh, in an area of uh, of mumbai where you are playing a very very vital uh, vital role to uh, my best wishes for the great success of your certificate course thank you thank you so much sir thank you thanks a lot
thank you so much sir uh, and uh, thank you that you know you taught us that science is about invention and that you know invention means not only success but also failure and it's all about not giving up and taking it ahead in that stride so you know with that uh, i would now request uh, our academic advisor veena punjabi ma'am uh, to speak a few words after which we will take in you know any of the questions that uh, anyone audiences would be having and also if uh, we have some questions from youtube as well so we would be very happy if our uh, speakers could answer it today over to you veena punjabi ma'am Ma'am, uh, unmute, please. Ma'am, you're muted. Ma'am, please unmute. Uh, no, ma'am, it's still not unmuted. Uh, please unmute it. Vipin, can you do it? Vipin. Yeah, yeah. Can you unmute, madam? Yeah. Or yes, no, ma'am. Ma now I you're unmuted. Yeah, she is there, ma'am. Now. respected professor sharma our very own professor sharma it's so nice to see him on every occasion and we are really really grateful to professor sharma for having actually come to most of our inaugural functions scientific uh, conferences and uh, we just actually you know we miss him when he doesn't come sometimes and uh, professor jayaraman dr stephen webster Dr. Pushpinder, Ramchandran, invited guests and other <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen and dear students. Of course, this is one of the. It's a very very rare occasion where an affiliated college can get a course as important as science communication. You see, science communicating science. to various stakeholders in the society is as important as doing science in uh, doing research and doing science because there is every subject in science has to be interpreted and it is interpreted at various levels when you write when you communicate science in journals as a research paper it has to be dealt with differently when you communicate science to school children it has to be brought in the most simplest of ways so that they understand the most complex of principles in science it's a tough it is a very very difficult situation when you have to go down to the level of the layman now especially during this pandemic i realized when people are talking about the rapid antigen test they know what is ra they know what is pcr test rt pcr it's 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 being rattled off and everywhere on youtube then on whatsapp you are getting all these kinds of uh, you know the terms but it's it's very amazing that everybody knows as professor sharma rightly said we all know the words what is dna but exactly what exactly is its its composition or what exactly is dna what is its role in genetics the it is difficult to actually get down unless you really can communicate in a very very simple way what about genetic gm foods being a biologist i know every second person no no it's gm so i'm not going to have it so they go and see the label they will see it is genetically modified and sometimes even we do not know what is gm in that way communicators will have to they have a very very important role in society and i'm very happy and i congratulate uh, pushpinder uh, dr pushpinder bhatia for a wonderful job of getting this course in our college and uh, identifying such an important course for our institution which is actually a very very a novel course and i feel it was it was required congratulations and all the best to you pushpinder and i'm sure you will do a wonderful job thank you ma'am so thank you ma'am sir stephen webster dr jayaraman all with you and our mentor dr m m sharma with us all the while and of course your wonderful team of teachers which you have and you're doing a wonderful job i was just telling you that in spite of this pandemic in spite of being you know in the midst of such a grim situation you still have the enthusiasm and you still have the grit 
to go ahead with as many programs as possible. Congratulations, and I really appreciate it. It is commendable that you could get this wonderful course. And uh, thank you for getting this course for the institution. Thank you. And uh, she's doing a wonderful Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Everybody will agree with me. Thank you very much. And thank you, Dr. Webster, thank you. for joining us and giving us this inspiration. Dr. Manmohan Sharma for being with us all the time. Dr. Jay Raman, as also he has been with us for every almost every uh, occasion that we need him. And these are all our, you know, they stand by us at, for everything. Thank you very much once again. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so uh, as you know that, you know, most of our students are on YouTube. They're watching us live there. Uh, so they have numerous questions that they have posted, uh, but due to lack of time, we cannot take all of them. And I would request the students that, you know, we would later take it up uh, with the speakers. But one of the questions which uh, the student is asking is that, you know, how to balance life during pandemic period? That is, you know, the psychological behavior, the mental pressures. So how can they handle this? So they would want to know this from the experts. I think, sir, yeah. Cultivate your hobbies. <laughs> Listen to music. <laughs> Listen to music. Listen to, uh, um, uh, if you are religious mentor of mine, listen to bhajans. And, you know, you, it is very individualistic. Uh, you are confined to home. Let the boredom not um, take over you. I can give my own example. I'm busy. I'm 84. But I, I'm busy. I walk inside the home. I take internet, browse through where varieties of journals. So whatever interests you, it's a time for you to catch up with your reading. If you like um, uh, classics, read uh, Shakespeare. If you if you enjoy something in Hindi um, or regional language, read the. It so happens throughout the world that some of the best literature is uh, the religious part, just like uh, Bible or um, uh, Quran, or those who are in Hindi, Tulsidas, Ramayana, they are extraordinary pieces of literature, independent of their significance uh, in, in, in religion. So each person has to find a way which suits the person. Um, if you like to see classic uh, cinema on the TV, see the, because today it is so much easier. You know, I think TV and in Internet has made the life so so different than it was earlier. Let let this not overburden you. I think you have to find your own way out. I just given you one or two simple examples of how I have no I have I'm I'm making use of my time very gainfully. I have no problem. None. Although yes, I must add. I must add here that sir is a regular follower of so many programs on radio as well. So uh, I hope this should help our students. Pushpinder, can I say something? I, I'm, I'm muted, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, very good, it's very good. That's the first question in our um, science communication launch. Because, yeah, the balanced life and how we live is very, you know, that'll make you a better science communicator. Well, it's interesting because of, you know, in England, um, we're in a different situation from you now. And my students are now back in college after months being isolated in their flats. Um, because it's a practical course, they're allowed back in. And at this time of the year, we're in small groups. So they're back together and they're exhilarated to be able to communicate together. So I think, you know, my, my advice is um, just try keeping in touch with people. Just try keeping in touch with people because it is very hard and it's quite frightening too. Um, um, you will be back with each other, you know, the time will come. But in the meantime, um, yes, definitely music, reading, languages, knowing your country. But, you know, make that extra effort to keep in touch with each other because, um, you know, friendship in a time of trial are often the most important friendships. And um, it's a cliche to say the world is going to be different after COVID, that is a cliche. But I think, you know, the science communicator, as, as Professor Noram said, you know, things have changed. And so your ability to lead the balanced life now and think out what's important to you, that will be very, very valuable to you as science communication students and practitioners, for sure. 
Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. That is very useful. Amrit? Yes, I think, you know, it is more about, uh, as we say, uh, it is uh, physical distancing, not social distancing. So we can keep in touch with everyone. And that's how, you know, we can move ahead. And with that, like, you know, let's move uh, towards the end of our program. And I would now request our Vice Principal, Sir, Dr. Ramchandran, Sir, to propose a vote of thanks. Over to you, Sir. Thank you, Amrindji. Good evening to one and all in this August gathering. We are indeed privileged to be with so many eminent scholars who have, uh, you know, been sharing with us over this last one hour. As the name is given for this program, the course on science communication, I really wondered uh, how our principal madam has uh, given me this opportunity to say what of thanks on this. Generally, people feel that uh, science is uh, physical science and uh, other subjects like uh, social science, they are not considered. But uh, today I could see a lot many things on the integration of these two things, physical and uh, uh, the human social science have been talked about. Uh, I am really privileged to say what of thanks to all these uh, speakers and all the different uh, experts who are gathered over here. First, I would like to thank our chief guest, uh, Professor Yaman Sarma, Patma Bibushan. He is an icon of science. As uh, Dr. Bina uh, Punjabi, uh, Madam, our former principal and our advisor, said that whenever there are programs, sir's presence is there. And uh, I was really fortunate to thank him in many of the physical programs that we had. And today, even though we are at various places uh, positioned because of the uh, epidemic, I, I, was, I am really thankful you know, to get this opportunity, see all these uh, enlightened faces. And today we could learn a lot of things. And this uh, wisdom that uh, uh, our um, sir shares with us is, you know, adding value to our uh, life. And definitely, sir, your advice on these different areas will be taken very seriously by us and uh, it will be very, very useful to us. On behalf of Guru Nanak College management and uh, staff, I wholeheartedly thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and uh, making this uh, program a highly valuable one. Secondly, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Stephen Webster, Director of uh, Science Communication Unit from UK. Sir, because of your presence in this program, you have really made this program an international one. This uh, is uh, really a you know, welcome thing that the institutional heads from different uh, countries come together and make uh, unique programs for the world. So I am really thankful to you on behalf of Guru Nanak College management and staff. I wholeheartedly thank you, sir. Thirdly, Dr. A.P. Jairaman, the nuclear scientist, the president of uh, STEAM Academy, and the chairman of National Center for Science Communication. Sir, your advice on your speech on the relevance of science communication is really you know, admirable. And uh, your participation with our institution for uh, you know, starting this program and uh, in uh, encouraging the staff and students of our college is uh, really a great thing. I thank you on behalf of the Guru Nanak College uh, for an accepting our invitation and encouraging us to have this program. And this, uh, all these sort of different programs do happen because of the uh, shouldering and the support of our you know, management for any sort of uh, useful programs that we conduct. There always uh, we see uh, Sardar Amaldir Singh Saini, sir, who is the chairman of the college, he is always present. And uh, in all respect, he gives support to us and because of which uh, these sort of programs do happen. And uh, a large number of uh, 
uh, external experts are available. They are also listening. Principals from other colleges are there. And uh, all the presenters in this meeting, they have made this program a real success. And for th their presence, I thank all of you. And our dynamic principal, young and dynamic principal, she is always into you know, bringing newness in the organization. And because of her active, energetic participation in bringing education into a greater heights, we are able to have this program today, as uh, uh, Madam suggested, that uh, these are the programs uh, we rarely have in the uh, affiliated colleges but uh, it is uh, becoming you know more valuable and uh, and more relevant also to have these sort of programs so i thank our principal for uh, taking initiative in conducting such programs and uh, bringing so many eminent personalities from uh, different uh, uh, places of india and also from other countries and uh, apart from this uh, today I could see the program is uh, well organized under the leadership of uh, Mrs. Amrin. From the beginning till the end, she has uh, programmed it uh, with the principal and it has gone very well. All the participants in the program have uh, you know, actually got a different uh, value addition. So for that, I thank you and uh, your team to uh, do this wonderful activity of uh, organizing the program. And uh, once again, I thank you all. And uh, definitely, I will be missing, you know, in uh, thanking our uh, advisor, Dr. Bina Punjabi, who has been there for long with us as principal. And even after retirement, he is working hard for the development of this institution. And whenever any program is conducted, in the college, she is there. Whenever physical meetings are there, she is there. Otherwise, also her guidance is always there with us. Thank you, Madam, for coming to this program and encouraging us. And I hope all the members who are present here should will go with a happy note and with a bright face that we have learned a lot from this program. And once again, I request our principal to uh, bring out uh, many more programs and for which we all staff members will be with you to bring this organization, uh, you know, best, one of the best organizations in Mumbai. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Stephen. And thank you to all my uh, guests who are here. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. You might like to consider a very unusual mm -hmm. course, economic geography. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Economic geography. You may start this with you know, in your uh, BA economics, a uh, uh, separate thing if you get autonomy. Okay. But otherwise, look for a mm -hmm. separate um, uh, undergraduate course in economic geography. You have geography in your college? I so we have economics, but uh, geography, sir, again, uh, economic geography as a course, I certainly can uh, look into that. Anyway, Though I don't have a separate geography department, yeah. Anyway, think about that. That's, it that's a, to me that my I course, will, I will. Nobody teaches, nobody has a course like that, to best of my mind. Oh. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. you. Thank, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm, I'm leaving now. Thank you. Yes, sir. sir. Yeah, sir, you may leave. Then we'll leave. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, thank, 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 thank you, Stephen. Stephen, thank thank thanks thank you. Thank you. for being with us. Nice meeting you. We'll talk soon. Uh, AP, see you soon. Yes, thank you. Hey, Jaran, and I am. See you soon. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Jairaman, sir. Thank you, thank you. And good luck, everybody, and all your wonderful Doctor, students. Doctor Barve, Bhagwat, sir, Hello. and all yeah. from the NCSC. Yeah, thank yeah. you for being here. And you may please leave. We we'll leave Director after. Congrats, yeah. Congrats, Congrats. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you so much. Leaving, leaving. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Anybody thank else who's there? Amarjit Singh, sir. Sir, our chairman is there. Yeah, yeah. Sir. Yeah. Sir, you chairman sir is there. Yeah, he's there with us. Yeah. All others have left. Yeah. Chalo. Thank you, sir, for coming. Sir, thank you so much for thank your you. presence. Thank you.
Thanks. Jairaman, sir, you may leave. You may leave. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, ma'am, for being here. Thank you. Good. It was very good. And all the best to yeah. you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much.